What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Lots of you guys have been asking for it. Uh, my initial thoughts and review on this bike. So I've had it about two months now, I think. Uh, maybe there's a little bit of overlap. We've got 20 hours on the bike now. 20 hours and 21 minutes to be exact. Ridden it in quite a few different places already. Uh, taking it down to St. George. <laughs> I've got some time on it now where I've written a good variety and I have a couple thoughts I'd like to share um, that you guys have been wanting to hear. So that's where this video comes into play. Um, in those first 20 hours, 20 hours and 21 minutes, we've put 453 miles on the bike, uh, which means I've averaged about 22 miles per hour. So I've still ridden kind of, a, I guess it shows a mix. I've ridden some slow stuff, some fast stuff. 22 miles per hour is a pretty quick average um, compared to doing just hard enduro or it's a little bit slower than if you're doing a full on desert race. So I've ridden a little bit of everything and all planes and clips as we go through this. But uh, jumping into first, a couple of the things that I did like. Uh, obviously it's a two stroke. One of the very best things about these enduro two strokes is just the way that they lug right off idle. Um, I always thought I'd get away with riding the four stroke. I've been on four strokes for the most part. I had a 250 a couple years ago and a couple of different times actually. Um, but I always told myself that I could ride a 450 or a 350 or a four stroke in general in all the same places. And I could, I got away with it. Um, definitely more frustrating on the four stroke than this thing. This, the way that this TE250i rides in the slow stuff is remarkable. Uh, I'm never gonna go back to a four stroke for riding the slow stuff. It just makes everything so much easier if I go to hop on one of my buddy's bikes, like one of CJ's two bikes that are sitting here in the garage as well. It's significantly harder to go slow. I end up killing their bikes uh, multiple times just doing the same stuff. So that's the first thing. I love the way that this bike plugs. It does a super good job. Um, I didn't do a 300 for different reasons. I wanted to do a 250 for racing the 250 class this year. And some of my other mods coincide with what I'm doing racing this year. You guys will hear more about that soon. My graphics are on their way. So I'll get them installed on the bike and we'll do a video talking about my 2020 plans. But yeah, so that's the first thing. I love the way that it lugs. So much easier to ride the slow stuff. It's, it's just above and beyond what I ever thought that it would make it easier to do. So I've really enjoyed that. Most of the time I just stay in second gear and you can lug it around and it just chugs. That traction is incredible. We go back to my Washington Gulch video from outside Baker City. We were climbing super steep hills that were snow covered and frozen. I just walked right up and in second and third gear and it just pulls traction. It's incredible. Um, <laughs> the two stroke traction is amazing, so that's been super fun. Um, another small thing that I definitely like is having the info cluster up there. I really enjoy having the speedometer up there as well as having a odometer, excuse me, having an odometer for each trip. I can guesstimate how much gas I can get um, on each ride. Um, so that's been super nice to have. I can, I can talk about the mileage here a little bit more as well. So I enjoy having an instrument cluster. Yes, I did delete the head headlight and tail light, but I still enjoy having that info cluster and see the speed that we're going how far we've gone on the trip and how much further we can get on a ride. So that is super cool. I am not going to remove that even though I took the headlight off. So I do enjoy having that. Another thing, talking more directly about the eye there, the TPI, um, the transfer port injection system that these Husqvarna and KTMs have. It's the only reason I went back to a two-stroke. Um, a lot of you guys have grown up on two-strokes that watch these videos. I hate messing with carburetors, I hate messing with jetting, and I hate making gas. I don't have to do any of that with this bike. It runs flawlessly top to bottom. You can lug it through some slow stuff for 10 minutes straight and it doesn't load up on the spark plug. You don't have to get it back cleaned out near as much as you would on a carbureted bike. Those are a couple of my key things that I really enjoy. You just put the oil in the tank. It's so far like watching it, it's, I could probably get like seven or eight tanks of gas on it. 
I've been toggled off like every three rides and it barely uses any oil, um, which is super cool. And then you just pour straight gas in from the gas station, you don't have to mix gas. I really love the TBI system. I've ridden here in Nampa about 2,000 feet, ridden up to about 5,000 feet, and then uh, about the lowest is maybe like 1,500 feet. So I've had a decent range. Uh, it's too cold and snow cover to get up very high right now. But come summertime, we'll be playing in the higher elevation stuff, and it just doesn't matter. The bike runs flawless, bottom to top. Don't play with any jetting, and I really enjoy that. So that's the only reason I bought another two-stroke, because I hate messing with that stuff. I just want to put gas in and ride it. Um, which comes to another pro for being a two-stroke and this bike it's way less maintenance than on my Yamaha um, it only calls for an oil change for the gear oil once every 40 hours I did the initial oil change at five hours and I'll do another one at about 20 hours on that oil so about 25 hours I'll change the gear oil again just to see what it looks like and see how it's doing um, should be just fine though I mean it's just for the, the clutch and the transmission so that's super nice. Other than that, wash it, put gas in it, and ride it. It's the way to do it. A uh, couple other things I like is, actually I wasn't sure I was going to like it until I got this bike. I've had other KTMs and the Yamaha as of late uh, with the, both the Brembo system and then the Nissan system um, as far as brakes and stuff on the, those other bikes. But on this bike, it's got the Magura for both the clutch side, master cylinder, and the whole clutch system, as well as both brakes. It's all Magura. It's not Brembo on the Husqvarna like it is on the KTMs. And I enjoy the Magura better, um, better than any of the other brake systems that I've been on. The Brembos are definitely a little bit touchier and they've got a lot of power, but the Maguras have just as much power and they're a lot easier to modulate. And I found that to be a really nice uh, nice thing, plus the Magura clutch on the left hand side, super easy to pull the clutch in, don't get tired clutching it, and with the being a two stroke you don't have to clutch it near as much to keep it from flaming out on like the four stroke, so that's been pleasant to go back to hydraulics um, on the clutch side, brakes work fabulous, front and rear, just one finger braking for me, my foot can modulate the rear brake super well, it's not too dusty, it doesn't kill it, and it's been awesome, so that's been great. And then just the high quality components on the bike as well in general. Husqvarna KTM put really nice parts on there from the build of triple clamps. Um, all the brake and clutch systems are just top notch. All the little nuts and bolts. The quality is just a little bit better than any of the Japanese stuff. So I really enjoyed having that. It's uh, my opinion. I think that they do a really good job. So those are some of the things that I definitely like. Moving on to the dislikes. Um, I mean, it's stuff that I knew I wasn't going to like when I first bought the bike and was planning on changing. So I changed some of these things that I don't like, and we'll talk about that here in a little bit more about the different mods and stuff that I've done to it. So first off, dislike suspension is way too soft in the factory. I'm only 170 pounds. Unless you're a 112 pound kid, I don't think that uh, you'd ever be on those softest frames that come on the bike. Especially when a lot of enduro guys are heavier built than older dudes. Um, I don't think for a 250 that it needs to be sprung as light as it was. So, suspension is way too soft from factory. It took a couple steps to get that fixed. First, we installed super springs just by myself. That was a huge change and a huge plus, but we still needed to go a little bit further than just the springs. Ended up getting a valve, and we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more here in a bit. Um, but yeah, just too soft um, for the riding that I'm doing. Again, if I was just riding under 20 miles an hour, doing hard and narrow stuff like this bike's built for, then it would be totally fine. Um, but <clears throat> that's not the way that I'm riding. Again, we'll talk more about my race schedule in another video coming up. But uh, I guess I should talk a little bit more about why I bought this bike then. A couple reasons why I ended up buying the TE 250i. Um, is I want to race the, or I'm planning on racing the 250A class or the lights class this year. And you can't buy a 300 to be on that. And really, I would have bought the TX 250i if that bike existed. It does not. And so I ended up buying the TE 250i and kind of converting it over to that off road race bike that I'm looking to build. Other question is why didn't I buy a KTM? The answer is I probably would have bought a KTM 250XC, which is kind of what I made out of this. But uh, my local KTM dealer won't take any trades, and the other bigger dealer in Boise um, just charges way too much money for them. So the local Grizzly Motorsports gave me a killer deal on this bike, 
and even doing all the changes I've done, it's still cheaper and better off than I would have done um, on buying a PPM from one of the other guys. So that's the reason for that. Um, a couple other dislikes that uh, ended up changing anyways, but uh, a couple things really just to please the EPA, which thank God the EPA is still letting us ride two strokes and dirt bikes in general. But the power valve, the way they had it tuned, they had it screwed all the way in. They tell you not to really play with that power valve spring, um, but everybody does and it runs better anyways. So I ended up pulling that power valve spring about one and three quarter turns back out from where it was stock for me. It kind of varies from different bikes that I've heard. Um, pull it out, that woke the bike up quite a bit and it runs significantly better with that power valve spring tuned out a little bit. They don't do those auxiliary springs, the green, yellow, and red anymore. I kind of wish that they did. I may still end up trying one. I'd like to put one of the red springs in this and wake it up just a little bit more and see how that feels. So we'll see what the future brings with doing that if I do any testing with going to one of those different auxiliary springs. And then the other dislike that is kind of a, actually a pretty big bummer is uh, from the factory, these bikes have the idle screw completely locked in permanently. Um, so you guys have seen my idle screw mod video, but from the factory to please the EPA, these bikes idle significantly too low. And if you speed it up with this air fuel screw here, it makes the bike run all funky and it's not good. Um, so in that video, I took the throttle body off. You have to heat up that lock tight to get that screw out. I had to heat it up 10 different times to undo that permanent lock tight and then put in that new idle screw so that I can actually adjust the idle. It idles perfect now, runs significantly better with that in there, so I recommend you guys doing that. Check out my video or Slayton's video to get a better idea of how to do that. But from the factory, they definitely need to do that, do that modification to make them working better. So, a um, couple of different likes and dislikes that we've gone over. I love the bike though. Um, it's one of my favorite bikes that I've had if not the favorite bike that I've had. Um, it's been been a pleasure. Um, just talking about switching to the two strokes again a little bit more. Like I said, for the low speed stuff and the slow speed, the lugability of the bike is so awesome and it's so much easier to ride. Um, however, motocross, it's definitely a little bit more of a challenge to get the bike up and running. My riding style, I don't really like to shift up and down throughout the track a whole bunch, so I'm used to just stick me in third gear on one of my four strokes and just riding the whole track in third gear and it's pretty easy to do on a four stroke on this bike you'd have to clutch the crap out of it out of the corners to get it up to speed or you just have to shift a little bit more and that's still something that i'm working on changing my riding style to match this is down shifting into second gear for the corner um getting back out of the corner and shifting back up into third instead of just I, if i leave it in third you have to clutch the crap out of it to get it back up to speed it's totally fine, it's a two-stroke. I knew that going into it, but I've definitely been adjusting my riding style to it. Um, but that's totally fine. Another part to talk about on this bike, um, really, I, I do love it. One of the other big reasons why I decided to go to a 252 stroke is because they're significantly lighter, they're less rotating mass, and it just wears you out a whole lot less. It's not 60 horsepower like the big 450s are. It doesn't wear you out as much so that's something i'm looking to do and i'm looking forward to doing this year racing in the desert um, for three and four hours even sometimes that i uh, hoping that also my fitness will be up a little bit more this year but uh, hoping this bike won't wear me out quite as much and then i can ride it at a higher pace for longer that was definitely one of the reasons why i bought the 250 and that has definitely been true so far from what i've seen it's i can ride harder for longer without getting this tired. So that's been a big plus to go into the 250 and one of the reasons why I went with them as far in here. Then jumping into some of the other mods that I've done so far. Um, obviously that sticker there on the front fork, that Alpine XC sticker, and that those last couple of videos I've posted. Got the suspension done finally. Um, it's been a godsend. The bike feels incredible now. I can charge into whoops, big, small, charge as hard as I can um, at this point. The suspension holds me up. It's been super, super cool. So if you guys need your suspension done, hit up Josh Lyman. I'll put up a little picture of his contact info right here so you guys can get in touch with him and get your suspension done. He's out of Utah. He's in Sandy, Utah, out of Salt Lake City, or just out of Salt Lake City. Um, he turned my stuff around in four hours, essentially. Uh, like I told you on that other story, I. I talked to him 
guess it would have been uh, the day before Christmas Eve. I texted him at 10.30 at night and said, hey, can you do my suspension over, over Christmas? He said, sure thing, bring it on down. I brought it down Christmas Eve. He knocked it out in four hours and I took it back home. So that's some customer service that you can't get anywhere else. And I appreciate him helping me out. Uh, did it for a good price and I'm happy to be writing his stuff because he, he had a spot on his first try. It was exactly what I was wanting to do. So that's been an awesome mod. The other biggest mod that I've done is I've done the Precision Racing Steering Stabilizer on there, um, the Precision Parabolic Damper, they call it. It's awesome. The reason I decided to go with that damper is that it sits your bar in the same spot. You don't have to raise them. You don't have to lower them. You have to buy other triple clamps. You don't have this big scary damper sitting on top of your steering that you're going to run into your chest lift. So that's the reason I'm with them. And their dampers work amazing. It's got both high and low speed adjustments. I just played with the low speed mainly, and it has been a huge confidence boost in my riding. I feel like I'm riding significantly faster, way more confidence. I trust the bike. It doesn't do anything weird. I don't get any head shake getting on the brakes, coming out of the 70 mile an hour straightaway, shutting it back down in the sand wash, and that's. Been awesome, so I really enjoyed that. A couple other things I went with these foot pegs. I had them off my 2017 KTM 350 actually, the um, Promoto Billet Air Extension foot pegs um, that keep you from breaking your ankles if you slam down hard. You've got that extra support back there. I did break my ankles a couple years ago, so that's a, a huge plus to have on there. I've got some sharp pins to help me keep my feet in the same place, and I definitely recommend those foot pegs. Stock ones are good, but I like having the peace of mind with having that extra ankle protection back here. A couple other things I did, threw on the FMF silencer, so all these spark rests is legal for riding the local trails here, as well as racing the local Sizzle series. Um, that way that everybody's happy and safe. FMF one is super cheap. Um, I actually got it for Christmas for my brother, so shout out to CJ for helping me out with that. A couple other things I did, remove the lights, like I said, I don't like riding at night. I don't plan on being out in the dark. I don't like the way that they look. Um, so found number plates on and took off the tail light there. Pretty easy. And then lastly, obviously, big part for desert racing and going fast. Got mooses in both sides. I did the nitro moose platinum, the new silver moose front and rear, and it does a really good job. So, um, well guys, I think that's pretty much all that I've got to say about the bike for right now. Let me know if you have any questions on the TPI or anything else that I've done to the bike, what my logic was, anything like that. I think I answered some of those questions. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Go pick yourself up a Husqvarna and go rip it in the desert or the motocross track or wherever you want. This thing will do it all. So thanks for watching guys and we'll see you out on the trails.